Great, it's recording. Great. So, uh, hi guys, welcome back. So we have a lot to um hit on this week. And um, we're going to start. Uh, Aileen from the group has uh a question on hamstring tightness as we get ready for the Dublin Marathon. We had someone on about knee pain, uh, deep knee flexion. They're told it was a hamstring issue. I don't think so. We were we're going to look at hip pain if you're like an ultra marathon. Uh, or a distance kind of runner after three hours is there any like stretches you can do so and it's going to show one or two that i would recommend um and then i just had um a message about like the pilates and oh piriformis syndrome was a big one that came up so we're really going to focus on that this week plantar fasciitis we're not going to have time we're going to do that next week and just someone was asking more about the sports pilates um the whole program so just even from the members i want to kind of like make sure that they know all the stuff that's there. Okay, so the first question that came in, I just was chatting to Aileen there just before it, uh, you can you can unmute if I don't get anything right here, Aileen, um, is hamstring tightness or hamstring strain, getting ready for the Dublin Marathon. So mileage is going up. We're training, say, five days a week. Um, it, her physio is like, it's like you caught it before, it's tendinopathy. Um, said to work on the hamstring. So that's where we're at. Aileen, can you unmute for a second? Yeah. Okay, so what, and like she was saying, we we send, sorry, a survey. Uh, and when you click hamstring, I'm much more about like release off around the, the pelvis mm -hmm. and the hip. Um, and I think I, like, I'm going to see the exercises, but most likely that's going to be my um recommendations here as well to be fair but like what exercises were you given just to make sure we're on the right she, lines um, it was uh, a hamstring um like bridge yeah you're lying okay. on the floor with your two feet kind of at a 90 degree, degree angle yeah on, yeah on the edge of the bed and you're kind of raising your body up onto a bridge and okay and then leg. the legs are on the bed and you're lifting your hips up so yeah okay on the bed, so it's single leg yeah okay i'd probably go double leg just for now but yeah yeah. And um, also she was able to tell me that I had like 67% strength on, on, on the weak hamstring compared, compared to the other one. one. So okay. I don't know how you suppose you gauge that, but she, that's what she told me. Well, you can just so, do, you can even do it off field or you can have a dynamometer, but go on, sorry. Yeah. No, but just whenever, you know, I thought about um, my hips, do you feel like I was using the ball, like, you know, yes. the hockey ball? And I did feel great release, you know, when I started doing that. Yeah, and I, I'm not sure if I put it in, but I'll, I'll do another one where if you sit up, so say you have the ball, right, and you sit up and, like, in on your chair, like, put the ball underneath, like, put it on the hamstring, or, like, sit on the ground and roll with you sitting up and roll till you feel where the hamstring is tight. Um, that would I don't be the know other that... exercise she gave me to be funny. That was the roll, second exercise. Roll the, roll the hamstring. Yeah, yeah, with the ball just kind of sitting on it or yeah, a chair. Ideal. Ideal. Yeah, mm. ideal. I think doing that plus doing the the hockey ball work around the hips mm. will really help. The bridge is fine because you're going to be getting more glutes there. What I was worried, and I'd probably do the single leg deadlift, you know, in the class where you bring the leg back. Um yeah. I would do that one as well, and that's going to kind of target hamstrings. What right. I didn't want to see was like very aggressive hamstring strains because while it is uh early yeah. you you got to determine between tendon hamstring tendinopathy you got to determine is it like a chronic issue where like the hamstring is now like weaker and needs to be kind of like appropriate load through the tendon or is it like an acute issue which you have like this is only new which mm -hmm. is much more like get the other elements taking pressure off especially when you're um especially when you are uh, building up in the mileage for the Dublin Marathon, that we, we want to make sure that we're uh, getting the pelvis moving correctly. So like doing your Pilates, doing like the core work, really finding the middle, doing the bridge. And again, there should be only like one hand with the space. So we like arch our back, come all the way up, find in the middle, hole in that, and then just doing the Pilates, do the routine I did. It's going to be roughly mm -hmm. the same as hers. But it's just yeah. going to have a little bit more of a focus on the the glutes to take pressure off the hamstrings. Still mm -hmm. catching the hamstrings enough to strengthen them, but it's not going to overly, overly work the um the hamstring. Because if yeah. the hamstring 
is acutely overloaded like that it's kind of not strained but you're feeling it you don't want Mm -hmm. to really work the hamstring that hard because that's an like acute issue and a lot of physios what can happen is they um the research they listen to on hamstring tendinopathies is about like long-standing long issues and they can actually exact it's the same way heel drops and heel raises you'll hear me say for achilles problems mm-hmm. yeah if the problems if the people have had that for ages but if you only have that for a while and then you start getting people to do that you can actually exacerbate it so yeah i like the bridging she hasn't the exercise is your physio it's a, it was a good good call there you need to hockey ball the crap out of your hips you need mm-hmm. to be doing your core work if you see that that hamstring flip, hamstring 10 minute rehab we have be doing that yeah. um yeah keep that going maybe like twice a week and then just do the normal pilates as well because there's a lot of a lot of stuff there like at least once a week that 45 minutes because even though it's working on these different areas these are all the areas that contribute to these like chronic mm-hmm. uh the, you know, there's common like running injuries and that kind of hamstring strain, hamstring tendinopathy, especially with the new shoes is one of them. Like, you know, it's kind of moved up the chain from like the calves more into the hamstrings. So, yeah, I would just say like, look, and I know Emmett, like he's my coach as well. So mm-hmm. I would just say if you just do instead of doing the S&C that's on that, just do the Pilates and do the stuff. It's going to be a lot more specific. And I, he would totally agree with that as well. So do the hamstring rehab. Do the hamstring week. rehab maybe like twice a week and do the Pilates and leave out the S&C that he's doing. And do Pilates once a week, yeah. Yeah. It's funny you say about the new shoes as well because I have, you know, the the, the fast shoes. Yeah, exactly, um, yeah. If you don't have um, your... Uh, well, I was I wore them funny for... I, want, I had a brand new pair and I wanted to break them in for the Dublin Marathon and Emmett recommended uh, wearing them for one long run, one training session and maybe one race to break them in. Yeah. So I this really came on me after I wore them for the first time, even though like I have been wearing um, the Nike Alpha Flies for racing only, only for races. Okay, yeah. Um. So I'm used to wearing them, you know, yeah, yeah. Them 10 different times. But I know, like after that last long run of seventeen miles, and wearing the the alpha flies to break them in, basically, that's probably when I felt it the most. Yeah, so like that's a good like with the new shoes, guys. With those carbon, uh, the carbon plates in the shoes, people are getting more hamstring issues and more hamstring mm-hmm. tendinopathies. That they, they're really saving the the calves, but what we what they're doing is moving the problems up the chain. So it's really important that you have good pelvic control, really good glute uh, stability, and then do, you're doing your hockey ball work around there to kind of counter counterbalance that. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. And then, as I said, keep that. You'll feel it. Like if you, like I do it sometimes when my hamstrings get tight, I'll or release around the hips and then I'll like sit up and roll the ball to where I feel like now you, yeah it needs to be a hard hockey ball or something until i feel that and then just hold on it and that will really release off the hamstrings as well and then just do the other work yeah okay, i so. use a slitter is a slitter okay you know try like get a, a try get a hockey ball or a cross ball the problem with a slitter is it's a little bit too small yeah um to really get in there uh you know so yeah. if you can at all try you get um to try get that like hockey ball if you can yeah okay they're online like you know up the north will be easy enough to find okay Thanks. popular sport <laughs> all right great stuff okay great uh um brilliant and uh, let's meet you okay i think we have something good to do hi guys that's great everyone's in it's probably a better time to do it okay so i just said uh just answered one on hamstrings there uh, I might just get through some of these questions first and then we'll have plenty of time now. I'm actually not under any pressure. So uh, plantar fasciitis, I'm going to do a video up of a rehab with that and I'm going to really talk about that in much more detail. Um, uh, I just had a question on knee pain. and uh, Let me see. And then I just want to talk through the program just to make sure that everybody has it because um, it came... Chris and beyond increase mileage double runs oh yeah that was a question as well double day runs as well theory form is yeah there someone had knee pain basically right they had uh 
find that I took a screenshot of. Okay, I'll get to that in a second. And, uh, okay, uh, basically it was like, with knees, right? So this question was like, they're getting knee pain. They can't go into that, like, you know, child's pose position. So they can't go into deep knee flexion without it being sore. They went to a hamstring, they went to a physio. The, the physio is like, I think it's a hamstring tendinopathy. I don't think it is that. There's two deep, deep knee flex, like where you can't fully flex your knee um, is going to be three things. You Most likely, depending on per persist, you probably a good idea to look at getting an MRI uh, just to rule a few things because two of these, one is you're going to have what's called a Baker cyst in the back. It's like basically there's fluid at the back and that kind of uh, gets compressed. The other one, if there's clicking, locking, or giving way, they're the main things you're looking at in the knee. Clicking, you can kind of get away with because it might be the patella. It can be the kneecap not like sitting right in the groove. And that's one of the main reasons. And that's most likely the reason for deep knee flexion. So if you can imagine uh, like the knee should be like that. So say if the knee is hitting here, what can happen sometimes is that either weak glutes up here, the knee kind of rotates in and it can kind of grind on one particular spot on the knee. Now, why is that sore in deep knee flexion? Not the knee itself, but back, the back crease behind it. That can be that like, um, okay, so if that's not the kneecap then, and again, that can be just deep into the knee. Is it, is it, does it like click, lock, or give way? Does it feel like goes under you or like, it feels like you gotta like, like move it out to, um, you can unmute yourself as well, sir, if you want to chat. If you can't, we can just do crease, but back behind the knee. Hi, Owen, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Um, it's, it's, um, no, there's no locking. It's just that crease behind, um, so it's at the back. Um, it's at the back of the leg for the, you know, the, the crease behind the knee. Yeah. So sense? when the two, yeah, when it when you fold it, it's at the back that you feel it. Yeah. 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 And is there any swelling or is there any like little like swelling in there, Anthony? No, it's it's not. No, it's no swelling. There's no clicking. It's just um, it's just kind of an aching, kind of dull sensation, and it gets particularly worse after after a long run. That you know, if I was to kind of do a child's pose stretch, you know, to yeah, it, it would just I can't kind of sit right back into it yeah um, yeah so and I, I wouldn't recommend you to do that for now okay so actually we're talking about that look if you go to that survey that you would have gotten before or like just post up into the whatsapp group we can send it again i would put down the hamstring because sometimes doing some hamstring releases like putting the putting the hockey ball underneath the chair um and then like kind of sitting or sitting up tall and then having a having the hockey ball underneath the hamstring to try release off there and then putting the hockey ball in that crease you know so it's not going to let you fully go so like put a hockey ball in the crease and then close up the leg okay uh, yeah close up the leg and then just roll uh, i'm going to show you close up the leg and then just rotate the ankle does that make sense so there's say if it's here you put it in like yeah. that close up the leg and then rotate the ankle so it's in the hockey balls in there and there's another muscle called the popliteus so um so that could be um that could be tight that goes straight across the back of the knee that could be a little bit irritated as well um the fact that there's no locking is really good the fact that there's no swelling because the other thing it could be is like a meniscus it's like the car like not the cartilage but it's like kind of like the cartilage in the knee can be a bit irritated and it doesn't like that deep flexion because it's like kind of banging off the two but it does sound more like that popliteus the fact that like when deep knee flexion the other other thing is the the kneecap the patella from all pain because you're in that deep position so it's really like it's really like kind of catching that and that's the other reason people don't like to do um deep knee flexion it's like behind the kneecap gets um gets irritated so you could also just click the knee one so you could just like do do the foam rolling video for the for the quad do that other one i'm saying like put the hockey ball in there close it up and then just rotate the uh 
ankle around, you know, like do that for like two minutes and then sitting up and like putting on the hamstring and just holding it uh, when it's sore and then seeing does that take the pressure off. And then, as you said, just doing like our our single leg deadlift again, um, our glute bridging is really going to help uh, take the pressure off here. Great. So, so it does sound like a hamstring. Um... Yeah, it sounds like the popliteus. Actually, if it's on the back, the other one, the main ones you'd be looking at would be the meniscus, which usually would be accompanied by like clicking or locking or giving way. Because if there's a little like tear, what's going to happen is that like it flicks over it and it kind of makes the knee go. So the fact that you don't have any of those is a really good sign. There's just one muscle that literally runs from, say, if this is your knee, it runs from one end to the other, just behind the knee. And it sounds like that might be a bit irritated, that popliteus. So putting the, putting the hockey ball into there, not like fully flexing it now, but just putting it to where it's kind of caught and then rotating around might just be able to release that off nicely. The other, the other one that's nice to do, right, is... Uh, is to like, see, I'm going to put my thumb in on the outside here. So in behind it. So like, say, here's the outside, black, back, black, uh, things aren't great. In, and I'm like in between the kind of belly of the two calf muscles. And again, just rotate that, like kind of move into it and move it around. And then I can also uh, do circles in. So say if it's like here, put my thumb in and then I'm doing that motion. I'm not a cameraman, that's why it's not great to see. All right, but it's like rotating, or I hold it and then I just rotate my ankle. That's great. Thanks, on Yeah, and then as I said, really working on like your single leg deadlift, look over, like even the knee stuff will be fine. The knee rehab, doing the Pilates, like um once once per week at least and then doing maybe that 10 minute video will really help because especially as people are ramping up mileage guys um uh yeah it, it's needed okay so just going to chat through and i can answer then some other questions that people have uh so i got i got a message right so like someone's like look i'm really torn um about doing the course or not. I uh, didn't think I needed it, but my body is feeling more locked up than ever after increasing mileage. Uh, initially, initial reason for looking into Pilates was because I'm extremely inflexible, typical runner. But recently I've been getting pain uh, in my left side or glute. It gets worse when I sit for long periods when I'm driving. That's that piriformis syndrome, or it could be the back. So we would want to clean that up. Now I also have like plantar in my left foot, which I never had before. Do you think these things can be solved through Pilates? Uh, sorry for all the questions. I know I actually like these questions. And that kind of goes with someone else who is like, my piriformis is at me, giving sensations in the bum and in the foot. I think it's still okay to do Pilates sessions or will it irritate it? Need to do a long run this weekend. Thanks. All right. So two things, guys. It's like, like if something hasn't caused an issue, like most likely it's increasing the mileage or being tight. I know people would be a little bit um potentially worried about doing something new, but like we have the easier classes as well there to do. And it's like, especially if you're increasing the mileage, like both of those people were, if they're feeling tight, you need something like Pilates. And like for obviously you have Emer and uh Will and other people who have um done the class for a while. Um, they'll know like there's kind of like we always start with that hip mobility drill so there's kind of mobility drills in there and with stability a lot of a lot of times guys things get tight muscles get tight because the muscles that should be providing stability are too weak okay so your body isn't going to let you just like move in any direction or move poorly so what happens is something has to like provide the stability so a lot of people get like say our piriformis syndrome so like this guy's tight say in the piriformis uh the other girl is she on the call she potentially might be she just said she watched back she's not uh the like the piriformis is getting tight because basically the glutes are inactive generally okay it can be like say if the si joint's not moving great but again that stops moving brilliant because it wasn't stable in the pelvis so 
once you get we do have the releases that's why with the we have that survey that we do have you can have do the hockey ball stuff into the glutes and i'll go through piriformis syndrome in a bit more detail now in a second but with the pilates at least once a week we're targeting the areas in runners in particular like that cause these issues cause piriformis syndrome cause achilles tendonitis cause hamstring tendonitis they're all the same because if you if if the joints that can't move correctly if you can't move correctly in the joints that can't should move you'll move you'll move too much somewhere else so if you can't move well at the hip you can't move well at the ankle you're going to move too much in the knee and you're going to move too much in the back if muscles that should be providing stability and the strength are not working something else that's not designed for that role is going to do it okay so it's kind of like if you had um like a relay like you've a you've a team and you have a sprinter or you've a distance runner and you um your sprinter is off so now your distance runner has to do it okay it's it's going to do some kind of job but it's not going to be as good and it's probably going to get into trouble and it's the same if we have a sprinter uh we have a distance runner and the distance runner is basically lazy the glutes have switched off the core is not working so the sprinter has to do that job it'll do some kind of job but it's more likely not going to be that efficient so that's why a lot of times why things get tight yes we want to release them off but they'll continue to get tight unless the the stabilizer muscles are working and they can kind of hold things in position and then we can work uh the areas into a lot uh better position so that's when that came in about that and like that i'm inflexible that's a really good reason to do the pilates that you're not moving correctly you feel stiff that's because and over time that will lead to issues like he's got plantar fasciitis he's got like piriformis syndrome i know it's a a change to the routine and sometimes we can think um we okay we're not going to be running say one of the days we only have a limited amount of time i usually always ran on a monday I now have to do Pilates on a Monday. But if you're like stiff and moving and you got plantar and you got like piriformis syndrome, you are not going to be getting to the line as the book is in the best shape possible. You know, like, like even with the aerobic, it's like if your body's not moving the way it should, it's not going to, I've never ever seen, even at the elite level, someone who's like getting patched up, get to the line and still like actually smash it. Generally, what happens when people run PBs, like really at elite levels, is like they're very strong, they're very fast, they're very fit. You know, they're like I always found when I was at my best, it was like I was able to um I just felt like I had I was good in every domain. And if I times I went too far down just the run and route, like grand I could take like say some time off in the summer from the S and C or the Pilates, but if I went too far down that way and I got stiff and sore, it didn't it didn't uh, translate to better performance. Don't know if that makes sense for people there, what I was saying. If anyone wants to say into that or put Anton in the chat before I move on, because it's just that thing I see a lot here. And I know it's like something new in a habit and obviously it's a additional expense. But it's like, you know, when I see people getting these injuries or I see tightness, I'm like, like, you know, I need to do this long run, but I'm getting these issues. And it's like, well, why the long run's probably causing these things. I don't know why you think the like cutting the Pilates is the is the way forward there. It's like even if we do the easier version, we need to get going with that. Um, just to say as well, I'm just gonna share my screen. Yeah, make sure I have. Oh my god, I have so many. I'm back lecturing now, so there's like. <laughs> I have a lot of a uh, lot of things open. Uh let me just see. Sorry. I'll just show this one for a second because it can come in. All right. But just to show, like, you know, if it is, say you're doing a long run and you're not like you're not sure of what you want to do. Like we had someone like, I don't have time for the 45 minutes. Okay, fair enough. You could do like 10 minutes here. Oh, it's not going to show you this screen. Can you see, is the, is it just a Word doc that's still on that screen? 
Yeah, just a Word doc. Oh, sorry. Yeah, wait there. I'm going to have to change my share screen. Uh, stop share it for a second. I'll share the actual screen. Like, you have your 10-minute add-ons. Just if you're, like, you know, like, uh, worried. Sorry, look at how many things I've opened. Um, that's the, always the one I have. There's always the easier version as well. So, like, say I know that um, one girl, one uh Eva, I won't say her second name, obviously, is just like her performance at, at her, do the hockey ball work, um, like answer the survey. If you're not sure of where it is, just put it into the, the WhatsApp groups. Um, do the easier version. Do just the 35-minute one here instead. You know, I would definitely say you need to say keep something going, you know, at all. We want to kind of keep something going and at all times that like we're, you know, just keeps you tipping over, right? So it's like 35 minutes. It's a, it's just an easier version if you're struggling, you know? So, um, then there's always like, we have a 20 minute blitz class. There's a bonus. There's a training obviously that you can follow. There's either a gym or a mobility. And again, look, I've done loads of stuff. So if there's something that you want, I don't have done. I remember someone asked for this last, last time. I'm working on this kind of meditative stretch thing at the moment as well. So it's like longer stretches. So if you feel like, you know what, I really want to improve my flexibility, it's something else that we could do. So there's always just a couple of mobility things. There's always just a few few other things. So don't worry that if it's just like, I, I the plat is is kind of designed this way that um for the vast majority of people, there's enough mobility and there's enough stability in it. And I change it up week on week to keep things nice and healthy. But if there's stuff you want to do in terms of more the yoga based or more like specific rehab or more like strength and like the gym and stuff, there's ones every second week, at least to every week. So just to know that they're still there, just, you know, sometimes you just see the class and we think, oh, that's it. But if there's there's another thing, just don't be afraid to like pop that into the the WhatsApp or email us back, like just reply to everardpilates at gmail.com and we can just like send you some of the stuff, even stuff we probably haven't sent you yet. We 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 probably have it on board. You know, we've had people for like three, four years. Oh, Akita's acting up on a bit of planter managing the healing search and loosen it. Perfect. I'll I'll get back to that email. I'm gonna do a big one on um I'll I'll do a whole a whole talk on planter next week. Uh just want to talk about piriformis. It's coming up a little bit. So what's going on with the piriformis, right? Basically a lot of times the pelvis isn't uh, there's two reasons, right? One, either the, the glutes aren't keeping the stability. So the muscle underneath the glute is the piriformis and that then tightens up to try keep the keep that kind of stability and keep everything moving the way it should. So one of the big things is to get the glutes really burning. That then allows the glutes to work, which are more efficient, bigger, which then allows the smaller piriformis muscle, once we release it off, it will stay released off. Also, we want to kind of get the core. That's why I'm always doing that like, finding that middle position, getting used to you stabilizing the pelvis in these positions. Again, allowing better alignment and allows the piriformis to release off. Um, yeah, so glutes. And then maybe sometimes, as I said, if the pelvis isn't moving correctly. So we need to get the glutes, we need to get the core working, and then this will start really taking pressure off the piriformis. So a lot of our bridge work, Going double leg as well, because sometimes it's single leg. If the pelvis isn't moving well on one side, you don't want to cause that twist. You want to just do things double leg, get like the glutes really firing, get the pelvis uh, alignment better and keeping it stable. Um, and then uh, we will see kind of improvements. Let me just make sure. Yeah, hip issues have it open. Uh, I'm just going to go through then like the 10 minute rehab of what we do so um does that make sense for what's happening so then right why then that can cause sciatic is that when the piriformis say the sciatic nerve goes through if the piriformis is tight it just presses on it and all any sciatica or any pins and needles down is basically like something is pressing on the nerve it's either the disc at the back pushing or it's the piriformis pushing on the nerve and that's basically causing a ringing or a dull ache in that muscle so we want to either release off the piriformis to take pressure off. And then we just need to do our Pilates and we can do our 10 minutes as well, just to kind of 
um get that working a lot more okay i'm going to come back to that uh question um emer because i wanted to chat through that i'll come back and just in the end there um okay so i'm just going to show my screen again Okay, so again, if we have hip tightness or that piriformis syndrome, uh, very common. A lot of times it's that SI, the pelvis not moving great and the hip bone can be kind of not smoothly in the socket. Um, doing the sports Pilates, again, we you know yourselves, we really focus on getting that pelvis moving correctly and then we really focus on the getting the glutes burning and that's really going to help around with that, um, with that uh, piriformis syndrome. Just the hip mobility work that you're going to do, like just follow the plan. If you have this and you're not doing this video, you need to ask, you know, it's just, I got the hockey ball underneath there. We're going to just target all the muscles that atta attach in. So the ones on the front, the ones right in the middle, that piriformis, you have your foot turned out and then the other one on the side. Okay. Like just up from the hip, it should be on muscle. And, um, we can just follow that along. I have that hockey ball. I do that every every single night, like every night without fail. I'm reading my book, I'm reading that Sapiens book at the moment. It's, it's promising straight away, I must say. Um, Seems like it's going to be good. The rehab. This is one then, Will, I was thinking when you were saying about the how to um, stay running, right? Depends on how much time. If you're out for three hours, I'm assuming you can take a minute, right? But... Basically, uh, oh, other thing you can do is just rock, just not not bringing your knees all the way to your chest, but bring your knees to line with your hips and just rocking side to side can really help here. Um, but with this, you can see it's really, again, just that glute control, really just getting those glutes burning. And you can see I'm not arching my back. I'm keeping that pelvis in that neutral spine. And then have a hand on my stomach, hand on my back. I'm using my back aware belt here, but just making sure that all the movements coming through the hip and just getting used to stabilizing the pelvis is really important. And then just burn the crap out of your glutes because the glutes are weak. So something has to compensate. Okay. Um, here again, as I said, we're just doing our bit of plank uh, work. But again, if you can just see that we're working on finding that neutral, like arching our back, coming all the way up. Just getting messages about the back wear belt. I have it ready. I don't know if you could do this one. Uh, uh, William on the runs right but this is the one I was thinking just do the squat shaker and especially bringing the arm down so when you see like say when we do it we're sitting in having the feet turned out slightly just like do a set of 10 pulses yeah. yeah and then bring in the you know when we bring the arm in yep yep especially if your hips are getting tight that'll open it up the most like so if you do 10 it'll be like a minute bringing that hand inside the knee reaching up so you're kind of pushing those hips wide and that activation is just going to really kind of set things up especially if you've practiced that because i find even if you're out for that long if you can say spend a minute or even less like 30 seconds but just do like 10 pulses drop one hand down elbows inside the knee just to open up with the feet turned out it's just going to like really help reset now you won't feel it straight away it'll be like a little bit like like you know another five, 10 minutes in, but you're like, oh yeah, it's actually freed up again, you know? That sound okay? That's perfect. Thanks. Thanks. You know, the other yeah. one as well, right? I was thinking now I'm going to have to go off this. So I'll, uh, I use my knuckle here and I find it works better than stretching if things are tightening up and I'm basically going to do what I'm doing with the hockey ball. Uh, and I'm just going to, I'll show you now. <laughs> uh, we'll be off the sound for a second, but I'm just going to show because um, I'm working the camera myself. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it from the, the great work. Okay, I'm just gonna be off here. So you're gonna go here, and in like that. So I'm grabbing in. I'm grabbing in my stomach. I can actually show this one, and I'm moving that up and down. And sometimes I'll grab the knee and I'll push down, just and then I'll rotate around. So I'll push down, 
then rotate around. So I'm like right in, I'm nearly into my like, into my pelvis. So I'm kind of feeling again for a kind of muscle, lift up, push down, rotate around. Other one I can do is just like literally in the middle of the piriformis and it's like knuckle in and just like cross friction, go up and down on that. And then up from where we go as well. And just like rub into that for like, or have my thumb in and just move up and down with it. Um, Just for like, you know, a minute, like maybe less than a minute, but just that I find those cross frictions or just catching into around the hip on the front. I don't know if you caught those ones. So it's in the front and then like yeah. rubbing those, those same areas that we do with the hockey ball. But just trying to do that with your hand in standing just to release it off kind of really helps. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks, Jan. Brilliant. Oh, yeah. Uh, great. Well, thanks, Will. Okay. Now, crack and true. That... That make any sense for people with peri- I know you might have piriformis syndrome, but people will be looking back who do. Does that make sense what I was saying there about that? Yep. Great, yeah. And like what were you catching from that just to do? What would you think the action points are? Would Say again? Sorry. I might have something else. Okay, yeah, so look, uh, hips tightening up. Okay, I got that one. I'm just going to go through some of these other questions that I had, and then i get back to Emer. Uh, you don't have to go, Emer, Anton, because I can do yours first there. Periformis was the main thing I wanted to chat about. Oh, Cottle had a great question as well. Yeah, I might actually ask this just to get off the running, like the injuries, and get back into injuries again. So that was the main one I just wanted to chat about today, Periformis syndrome, what's causing it, and then... um how we deal with it so a question for the q a uh this is from kyle uh i hope shout out there man i hope you don't mind me i won't say your second name just in case so uh are there benefits beyond the obvious increase in mileage of double day runs if you were to do a tonight a session tonight and were to do four miles easy in the morning with eight miles in the afternoon with a four mile am run speed up recovery is there any benefit for doing a four miler and eight miler as opposed to say one twelve miler? yeah the main benefit of it is like the Ingebrigtsens will do six miles and six miles because there's less cumulative fatigue on the body. That's why they do it. So there is the benefit is it's like you get the mileage in, but it's less harsh on the body to do it that way because you've got like a big recovery in the middle. So um, they'll go six and six because I think after four, like 40 minutes, there's not much cumulative effect on the body at all. Um, like so yeah that's why people will do it because you can get 12 miles in in the day um i have a thing as well i think it's like look a lot of professionals do it and like like i was a professional runner for a year um well full time i wasn't that good enough to probably be professional <laughs> to make much money out of it but um you know you're not doing much in during the day anyway so you have the time so like and you don't really walk around or do anything so um, I myself, I, I've gone back to this always doing one because I just didn't have the time. So we do, even when I was, say, like break, like, you know, breaking 14, just like a couple of years ago or, or doing well, like in 10Ks, I would do 11 miles straight as opposed to doing 12 miles. So I'd cut back the mileage that I was doing. But because the cumulative fatigue of a longer run is harder, I felt like you were getting probably the same aerobic benefit. Um, with like say eleven miles straight or ten miles straight, then I would have been doing like say twelve miles broken up. Um and it just saved like having to get a shower again and and get my it was just but then that comes down to if you're working as well. Do you know it's like so if you have the time, ideal is like four and eight or probably six and six now is probably getting more popular. Um but if you don't have the time and you're working, you're kind of running around during the day anyway, like the metabolism is quite high. What I found was when I was working, it's like the thought of having to go back out for a second run was just like torture, you know, where it's like, at least if I just got it done early in the morning or just had, well, I do it in the morning. So if I got to do it early in the morning, it's done for the day. I got 24 hours recovery. Um, But yeah, that's why they do. That's why most professional runners do it. They want it's less cumulative load on the body. 
so they can get the mileage in without it being so hard. And two, I think it's like they don't have high metabolic expenditure. Like like elite runners are, you got to be really lazy. You don't like my wife would tell you like I'm terrible for walking. Like I'm getting better now because I'm like not as serious about it. But I hate walking. Like runners don't walk anywhere. They don't do anything. They just run and then they recover. That's it. Like so, like their actual metabolic like expenditure outside of running would be very low so i think if you go out twice it's kind of kicking it back up again and it kind of gives you something to do does that make sense there carl you could actually yeah if you had the time sir you could go eight and eight yeah you'd have the same benefit essentially so you just ask could you split a 16 run yeah if you had the time yeah yeah the inga britain's like like you know the dude's running like you know, he'll he like potentially he'll break the freaking half marathon, and uh, he like he doesn't run over ninety minutes ever, and he does one hundred and forty kilometers a week, but it's all like twelve miles a day, six miles, six miles, and then they do one long run of ninety minutes, which might for him like fourteen, like fourteen, fifteen miles, depending you know depending on if it's hard or easy, but like and again for him. The other thing as well, guys, I was just saying that with um, uh, Emmett and Nevi, I'll be putting out that podcast, is like, make sure your easy runs are easy. You know, like people sometimes see all oh, the Inga Britons, they're covering 15 miles in that time. It's like, yeah, but remember he's running freaking like 12.50. So his like, his 5K pace is like 4.10, four, you know, might be even near close to four minute miling. So if he's running, say, six minute miling, that's two minutes like easier than his 5k pace so if you're running a 5k say in like six minute mile in well then you should be doing eight minute mile in. <coughs> um okay perfect that if that makes sense yeah might be worth trying especially sarah if the if the knee is sore it could be just a, a way of um helping it okay good i did love that question though carl i must say Something I hadn't really heard about. Dan, Tony Storm, Piriformis, hips, as we got Will's question, just making sure I got all these. Well, anyone else that I had? Plantar fascia, as I said, I think is a big thing. So I'm going to do talk through it. Basically, it's like you just need to get the, like, the sole of the foot absolutely burning. Uh, there's a few kind of different type of exercises that needed to do with that, how to do that correctly, not like toe crunches. You don't do that. Um, Rolling James Kenny Kenny in the group had said it like rolling the bottom of the foot with like an ice ball and like keeping that released off is a really important one. Uh we kind of went through the sports pilates programs, not just the sports pilates, but that is really designed for all these injuries and and work and like you know, keeping your strength, keeping your mobility. But then there's also the things of like there's gym programs there, there's they're all bonuses, but there's mobility programs, there's the like general 20 minute like foam rolling thing you could do like instead of a physio or there's like 10 minutes of like specific if you have Achilles problems do these if you have whatever just to kind of keep you uh keep you injury free Um, this thing keeps going off so I just wanted to say that 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 is just even for the price sometimes oh it's expensive it's like if you go for one physio session now one physio session is about 60 70 quid if you're in Dublin it can be more than that so it's like you know, and you'll have you'll be okay, but you won't have a management strategy. This is about like learning how to like, you know, over eight weeks you'll basically transform, um, especially with the amount of mileage that you can can do. Oh, ankle sprains, that was one. Uh, I'm gonna answer Amer's question first, and I'll talk about someone who's getting ankle sprains because it's actually slightly different. Mm -hmm. So, um, both Achilles acting up and a bit of planter planter i'll talk about achilles again you're just going to be doing your single leg deadlift a lot if you're getting ready for the the marathon it could be happening also emer you'd be the opposite of um uh aileen who we were chatting to at the start where i would then wear my um your vapor fly if you're wearing them like so for your longer kind of sessions make sure you're wearing your vapor fly or your like carbon fiber plate shoes do you do that and uh, no, I have I've ordered a pair of carbon ones um the sock sockany ones the yeah Pro they're good yeah the speed one of Pro I think it was it yeah 
I was a bit yeah, start wearing heavy. them. Start wearing them for all your sessions when they come in. That'll help take okay. that pressure off. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah, heel inserts are grand. Loosening the feet. Are you doing your single leg deadlift? Yeah, I was doing that lower leg. Um, the rehab one. Ten four. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Just a ten minute one. Perfect. Yeah, and then as you said, yeah, just doing your like hockey ball work. Do you have your compression socks? Yeah have them they're great all right yeah yeah brilliant so just look you're in a you know you're getting ready for the the marathon and like it's going to be it's going to be um at least the mileage like all right yeah yeah exactly will next other question will the next set of marathon plan include running at marathon pace or do we just focus on the zones to match it following week 10 out so it's four by seven at zone three yeah don't worry about marathon pace like zone three is basically off your lactic is marathon effort so like i know it'll, it'll take like uh look until you get to the marathon it's going to take um me, me look you could potentially we could i might actually just have a look um and we might pull up that one and let's pull it up and see um what was it off between these? Oh yeah, just take sorry, take about seventy five seconds off between the four minutes, seven minutes, and just stay jogging. Is that okay? Perfect. Yeah. Um, last question is most pressing one is the running tomorrow. Perfect. The mar the so Emer's doing like the kind of the marathon sessions that we're doing, like the program that's kind of included just for Dublin. You don't really have to worry about the pace when you have the lactic threshold done because like what like people do a pace that you haven't actually ran and then they also do uh so it's like ideal pace and it's gonna be ideal pace when you're tapered and you're kind of ready to roll. <laughs> like she doesn't have the shoes yet. So uh like by doing it off effort and by doing it off like say um what the lactic that you'll have at marathon pace it's going to like on the day you'll be lower than that pace for the first 10 miles you'll be at that heart rate basically for the next 10 and then the last six you'll be digging in that'll be a bit above that but you'll be fine that'll get us way closer than actually trying to run marathon pace because if you try run marathon pace what what pace are you trying to go for again uh well, that's why I find it hard to know. All right, uh, when I did the marathon before, it was kind of around four point four per kilometer. But uh, I'm not the same, not the same person. <laughs> Two three years later, so it's kind of I'm Been just not hundred percent sure. Yeah, where I'm yeah, sitting. and I'd be I'd probably be a bit like check the what the pace is at that marathon pace. <clears throat> and the marathon pace is his own three on, is it? Zone three, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, zone okay. three is marathon pace. But that'll be a lot slower at the moment. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's kind of where it is. And we can kind of build. Yeah. But you'd be surprised when you get into it, what feels like that. In the race, what I do is just go out at that effort. Okay. So, like, that would be your zone three would be slower than your marathon pace, the marathon pace you would do normally. Yeah, yeah, just just go out at the effort. You'd be surprised <laughs> if you go out at the effort. You'd be surprised how much quicker you'll be in the marathon because you'll be tapered and because everything will be going okay. Okay, I could try it at the half. I have the half on Saturday, so I could try it there. Yeah, just go out. Yeah, yeah. literally, even try even go out. Try go out. Even I wouldn't like just to take that in. Go out at that marathon pace effort. Go out with that like that seven minute effort, and you'd be surprised. You'll be a lot faster than it is. And I know I asked before, and just in terms of this one to try it out, then should I tr wear the heart rate monitor or just go on field? Look, it's again? up for you. I'd rather go on field, to be fair. Yeah. Because it's actually hard to determine because you'll be actually lower than the heart rate and then get it. So I think just let's go on field and see, and then we can throw in the heart rate monitor if we're if you struggle on this one. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Owen. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, so it takes 75. That will get you closer. And then having the marathon, having half marathon is actually ideal because that's getting us getting that kind of pace or faster pace anyway. So it's just adding that into the program. 
Okay. The rest then is just building the aerobic intensity and just getting like, um, look, we can put in a bit if we need to, but I, I honestly feel like it will do better just off heart rate. It'll feel easier. And then you'll be surprised how much quicker you will go. Okay. Lovely. So look, we'll be back on here. You can slate me if it doesn't. <laughs> okay, great. Now, ah, yeah, okay. Makes complete sense. All right. I think I'll answer ankle sprains in the end. I'm going to go. Okay, Ruth here has, I have a weaker side and injuries are all on. I have a weaker side and injuries all on other side. Okay, so you feel you have one side, like the right side is weaker, but the left side gets injuries. Would you have any advice when doing Pilates? I more do more on the weak side. No. Uh, a lot of times, um, hamstring and Achilles. The, the only way I do it with the... um. If I wanted to rebalance sides, Ruth, what I do is I start on the weaker side. If I was going to say single leg bridge, for example, I start on the weaker side and I count the amount of reps I can do. So say if I burn out at like, say, 15 like pulses or bridges, I only do 15 on the other side. So you just like cap it of whatever the weaker side can do. Um. Yeah, because the symmetries can kind of make it up. So I don't go two to one or anything like that. I just cap it on the on the uh weaker side. Uh I wouldn't even do any more on the weaker side. I know I, I do a lot of stuff like uh your double leg, make sure that you're doing um let's just do the Pilates, I think. The Pilates I do a lot with the two legs on the ground because I like the pelvis, learn how to keep the pelvis stable. So I'm not actually a big fan of doing single leg stuff because I find that a lot of people. If you are doing single leg stuff, you'll see that I'll always say, like, keep your knees in line with each other and just like extend one leg. I don't like really like hooking up because I really like twist the pelvis. So unless you got a lot of good core control, I'm not a big fan of that. Same with the single leg with Achilles and hamstrings, though. Single leg deadlift should be your like best friend. So say if I could only do like 10 second holds and I'm doing like 10 of them. Or just following along with the videos. If if I'd what I do is I pause. Say if I'm like struggling, I can't get the last two done on my weak side. I pause, and I'd make sure I get the last two, and then if I can run straight through on the other side, grand. But I wouldn't do more than I just make sure I'm getting them all done, even if I need to take a little break, and come back to it. Does that make sense? Yeah, we'll just ask for that in the um the WhatsApp group, will you? And we'll put it up. He's just looking for the hockey ball or hip routine. And again, guys, if you just want to email, if you're in the sports Pilates, Anthony want like or any mobility or flexibility routines or gyms or or hockey ball, again, just ask. And then there was a survey there. So you should um should have it just posted up into the WhatsApp group and we'll get that sorted. Okay, hopefully Ruth thinks that's all right. Single leg deadlift, Ruth. Don't do more on the weaker side. Just make sure that you cap it. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, okay. Uh, Porek then, thanks for your advice. I've been doing the hockey ball and strength training for a long time. I've had a hip issue for two years now and wasn't getting better. Started hip strength two weeks ago. It seems to improve, but I'm, but I'm afraid to say it. Yeah, you're drinking stuff. No, but isn't it great? Like as I said, two years... You're only doing it two weeks. Are you are you new power? Because if week four is gonna be your best one, the Pilates flow. It's like literally I was I couldn't walk with my hip and I'd been out for 20 weeks. And I did that and the next day I was like saying to my wife, I was like, I think I'm gonna going back running in two days. And I was, we were on a cruise and I was like started jogging within like she's like, leave it a few days. It's like, no, it feels better. Also should have varied up and doing that everyone every day. Uh my glutes starting getting a bit tight but pain and hip not as bad no uh, oh, I'm just going to cause someone to mute so I can't hear there so, there we go okay uh, if you're new no just do the do the just do okay do your 10 minutes like you can do that maybe every second day um depends on what week make sure you're, you're just getting your your sports pilates done as well your 45 minutes because that's varying up the stimulus like you know like a lot of people had the sliders in week two oh the 
older ones had a kind of different one than the beginners but basically it's sliders this week next week it's going to be like adding a weight for that distraction and the more pelvic control week four is going to be like a kind of well the og class had a kind of blow last week but again week four is going to be similar to that hip opener stuff so that will help so make sure that we're not neglecting the the pilates stuff if you've had hip pain for like two years i probably maybe look at doing pilates twice a week and then the the hip openers maybe three times a week for 10 minutes uh depends on yeah. how much time you have yeah hey Barry. Yeah. Hi. Alan. Um, yeah. Thanks. Um, I have, I, I've kind of been doing my own strength exercises um, for two years, but it, it didn't seem to make any difference. And and then I did your, your thing for literally a week, I'd say. And, and I noticed when I went for a run, I wasn't as sore. Now I'm not saying Brilliant. it's better, but it's, 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 it's better than it was. Um, but, and it seems to be improving. And, and I find when I do, even if I go for a run and I did, I do that exercise, it, it seems to be better after it. Um, so I, I, I suppose the thing I'm wondering is, should I, should I vary it up or will I get, you know, too used to doing that exercise and, and it won't do me any good or I, I'm still doing, I'm doing the Palaches then twice a week as well. I'm only yeah, new brilliant. with you, but, um, uh, it's, it does seem to be working, but I, I don't know whether I should, should be doing it every day or should I vary it up? That's, no, that's just, sort of thing. Yeah. Do it every second day. I do the hockey ball work as well. You know, the, the Z that you're doing and then do the Pilates. Yeah. The Pilates will vary a bit, up, vary it up enough, and then the hip mobility, the hip like rehab videos will then just like kind of stay working on the things that are weaker. Again, you're not out of the woods yet, so like, like after a while, what you'll find is that when you're moving better, that hip pain will be gone. Like you've had it two years, so it'll take a little bit longer, and then you can probably just do the Pilates once a week, and then if it ever gets sore, just do that ten minutes just to kind of yeah. keep you on top of it. Yes, yes. No, that's that's brilliant. Thanks, Malian. Yeah, great. That's great to hear. But it is mad. Cool. See, see, sometimes it's like not getting the right exercises or not having the right, like not having the routine. Yeah, you see that a lot, like because you know it's easy. People can think they're doing the right things or doing their own yokes, but it's not going to work because a lot of people are doing either the wrong exercises or doing them incorrectly. So yeah, it's great to hear. Uh, great to hear that it's helping that much so fast. Okay, okay, last thing I'm going to do then is uh, ankle injuries. Oh, again, I might do this later. Um, oh, look, I'll just say, like, with ankle injuries, let me just see, do I have this video? Oh, my God, it's still 10 minutes. We have still run around. Ankle, ankle vary is not the same, right, as uh, Achilles or a calf. Achilles and calf are generally like overloaded on the the uh, calf. So we don't want to be doing heel drops, heel raises. If you're getting like ankle sprains, you actually like a lot of times the muscles around the ankle are just gone really weak. So you need to really just like do a lot of balance work. You can do your heel drops, heel raises. And once you've done that for like, say, three weeks, um what you want to do is like hopping and landing and really like soft landing. So again, I'll just share my screen. I'll share sound this time. Go. Overly be work okay, on so this. We have what our, you want like, to do is just uh, get everything super strong. Whatever. Okay. Now, so injury. So, or, you know, if you are a few months after like a stress fracture or uh, you're after a few months of like Achilles pain, it's a good way to Just start like loading it up safely. Me. Ready? Hop, hop, soft landing. See it? See what I'm saying there? Like the soft landing is so important because those muscles stop working. I've had people with like three years of ankle problems and then they just start, they start working on the strength where they're going hop, okay, hop, hop, soft landing. So, so like really working on, the soft landing works on the, uh, the soft landing works on those ankle muscles and and that kind of ankle control. Now, I wouldn't do that with like Achilles or or calf issues unless they were chronic. Uh, I would um, I would just do what we're doing, like getting like the the muscles on the foot strong, doing a single like deadlift, doing our bridging, doing our pelvic control with the Pilates ankle injuries are slightly different you do need to work on that like hop hop soft landing 
skipping single leg skipping is like really good for it you need to kind of get the muscles around the ankle stronger again um but do that after three weeks you want to kind of more do like a a more basic program of like the mobility stuff that we do so if you do click click ankle as an issue you'll get the rehab for that okay that's it i think that was a really good one um if people add like say like cotton's question or I'm going to do planter in depth next week um, cause I'm, and I'm going to come up with a rehab video for it because it's actually having a few people. Guys, again, like I say, think about the classes. We have different, I have different ideas for Pilates classes and stuff like that that I want you to do, but all the bonuses, like there is someone asked for like a that stretching routine before going out for a run. So we just did that. Like I love doing all, all of those. They don't take me that long. Um, So anything that you're looking for, uh, let me know. Is that okay? Great. Thanks, Owen. Thanks a million. Thanks. Thanks, Owen. Let me know how Cheers. that. Uh, Thanks, Owen. Great, Emer. Let me know how the uh half marathon goes, will you? Yeah, will do. <laughs> Thanks. Great stuff. Well, thanks, a million. Take guys. See you. Take care. Cheers. Thank you.